Hi guys, welcome back to Delivery Studios. We're going to be looking at the movie app and this time we'll be integrating the Room Persistent Database alongside the Android Architecture Lifecycle where we'll be implementing using live data and um, some uh, asynchronous uh, communication with uh, the Room Database. Uh, we, all, we should know what Room Database is by now. Uh, the Android Architecture Lifecycle was introduced uh, in uh, the Google I.O. 2017, uh, which it has actually come to stable release and uh, it's uh, actually taking away a lot of uh, boilerplate code, uh, most especially uh, with the Room uh, Persistent uh, Database, which is uh, a kind of layer on top of the SQLite database. Uh, so you, the aspect of you creating the content provider, uh, of you going through uh, uh, the 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 contract, the DB helper, and some other uh, you know uh, kind of uh, let's say a long process of achieving uh, some simple tasks uh, using the SQLite database has been abstracted away, so you could actually uh, get yourself acclimatized with the use of uh, the Room database where you. I'll be using the view model, which will serve as your data uh, storage uh, across uh, different configuration changes uh, when it comes to when you're trying to rotate to the, uh, the device where the, um, uh, the, the, the system will kill the application and recreate uh, over again where you get to lose data but with the use of the view model, it's going to actually persist over configuration changes. In the movie app, we're going to actually move with the train. Uh, we're going to uh, integrate the room persistent uh, database with the favorite uh, uh, movie when you're actually uh, saving a movie to the favorite. So instead of you going through uh, the direct communication with the database, or even probably you could use a content provider to get that done, I uh, will want to look at the, the, the latest standard uh, because contract provider is dedicated for Android 28, API 28. So uh, we'll be uh, moving with the train using Room. Let's get started. Right there in the emulator, we have uh, the different movie cards, uh, Alpha, Black Panther, Avengers, and so on. So a selection of a movie takes you to a detailed page you could see uh, the art signs show that you've actually uh, pick or you've selected this movie to the favorite DB. Uh, so you could actually take it away by clicking again and uh, it so showed removed from favorites. And when you go back to the activity, you have it there. And when you're going back, it's actually going to depict that you removed from favorites. But if you would like to add to the favorites, Toggle this one more time, add it to favorite, a step backward uh, to the main activity, and a click on the card will show that uh, you've actually uh, keep this right there in the favorite uh, database. All this will be done using the, the room persistent library and uh, we'll be using the view model to uh, to get uh, the, the logic done. Uh, the, the, the basic way to actually get this done is uh, um, abstract a lot of, uh, let's say, communication with the data, probably with the remote uh, data or with the SQLite database, abstract it away from the activity or from the views. So get that done in the view model or with uh, the repository to uh, channel to the, uh, to the appropriate channel. Probably you need to fetch data from the database or you need to get that remotely uh, from the API. So that's just the basic architecture of the lifecycle or the Android architecture components. But now let's focus on Room and let's get that started. Looking backwards, let's get to see how we're going to implement the library. We need to implement that in the dependencies. Uh, we have that commented, you could see Room, uh, where you need to implement uh, the architecture components the persistent library which is room uh, which is annotation processor with the lifecycle extension as well that's where we have the view uh, the live data 
which uh, is like a container that keeps uh, the, 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 the recent record of your data depends on what you're listening to. Probably it's uh, going to be the, the, the recent call to the API or a particular kind of uh, data you've actually stored in the live data. So it's going to keep the recent uh, the copy of the data right there in the live data that actually stands and uh, and uh, it withstands the configuration changes we've talked about. So once you include these dependencies, you sync Gradle and you get yourself uh, rolling. I will be talking about the app executors that enable you to run uh, long running bank red threads uh, to your DB. Probably you need to communicate with your DB. Uh, you could actually use the app executors. We'll get to look at that later on. Create a package called database. Uh, this is uh, a subset we were actually working on what we had in the movie app, uh, which has started uh, in, for some time now. So if you are hitting this video, I'll implore you to look backwards to the channel, get yourself um, started with uh, the first part of this video where we started from up to this extent. It's actually a bunch of this is actually in a playlist which you could follow from the first video to this. You need to set up your room database by extending room database. At the top line 10, you could see uh, we have the entities. Entities uh, is just the database name uh, where you have the favorite entry. Uh, entities are the columns rather uh, which you'll be uh, interacting with just like the contract we used to have. The version of your database and the export schema or uh, you could decide to export the uh, the schema which is the metadata of your database if you like. Now this uh, is the instance where you're going to instantiate uh, the, the database anytime the instance is being called it's going to create a new database instance and uh, you could actually trigger that with a uh, database name app database name which is favorite as you could see as a static final string so it's going to actually trigger the database name and start it up you could have an abstract the, the data abstract object uh, which uh, where you're going to declare all the logic you, that will be interacting with the SQLite database, the select statement, the query, the delete, the update, uh, the sort and so on, all the manipulation. Now you have room to to, to initialize or to declare uh, the SQL, the SQL syntax, uh, which uh, is quite handy. So if you are very good in this SQL, you could directly write your SQL syntax, which will interact with the SQLite database. That's for the database. Let's get to look at other aspects of the implementation. We have the the data apps abstract objects uh, where you're going to actually mark your marking or uh, probably some streams to list uh, where you're going to even integrate live data to a list uh, of uh, of uh, of objects that are coming from the database. So in turn, you're fetching. Uh, a result and you're forming a list from it so you're trying to uh, mock that to uh, an object like flow on like before when you get to iterate through the cursor in each of the item of the cursor you add to the list to form a list now you get once you're fetching just a query you're going to get a bunch of uh, items stored in the list let's get to look at the manipulation we'll start well start up with the first line 20 here I said select all from the favorite table uh, in turn you're going to have that save uh, to a live data which is the list of the favorites that's going to call the method called load all favorites that's the pointer to this query the second query here is going to load all but based on uh, the title which is the selection argument that select all from favorite table where the title is equals to uh, the value being passed in. So it's actually going to be a mail list. It's not going to listen. Live data is not holding this. So that's uh, that. That's not a container. We have different live data you can set up in the data abstract object. Now you need it. You have the insert. When you're inserting uh, the favorite object, uh, which is going to be an entry. We'll get to look at the favorite entry, uh, which serves as the entities uh, we'll be looking at. You insert that into the favorite uh, DB inside the table. 
and updates you could set up an update as well you could delete when you're deleting all records that's what that is for when you're deleting a record but when you're deleting a specific arrow or a specific item you could issue out a query delete from the favorite table via the movie id as equals to the value of the id you're passing into and you have the delete favorite with an id you pass an integer value called movie id that's very important for that method to run and the last one we'll be talking about here is uh where you're selecting from the favorite table where based on the id probably on click listener you've clicked on an item in the recycle view where you could extract the id and from there you could actually load that particular item the metadata the, the full uh, uh objects involved so you could issue out this query and it's going to be listening to the live data as well anytime a change happens there probably an update has been triggered on that particular item it's going to fresh the new record that's what that uh, is actually depicting now let's get to look at the entry the entities uh, itself which serves at uh, the podium at the same time as the columns you have the table name called favorite table and um from there you could set up your column info the first one is the id which is in auto increment uh which is auto generated it's a primary key an integer value the second one is the movie id it's also an integer value uh the third you have the title you have the user rating the poster part and the overview now you get to create the constructor that will undo them you could should also have your set and getter as well the favorite constructor takes those parameters in uh which are being initialized the essence of ignore is when you need to use the uh like this called the overloading constructor when you need to pass in another id uh which is the uh identifier now based on the increments uh so if you need that so you could actually use the favorite entry you have a set and getter just like the normal set and getter you used to have uh which this is the model you use in interacting with the database or with the table let's move ahead now that's for the database we'll get to look at the view model the view model serves as uh let's say the uh, the class that actually holds the data temporarily anyway it's not uh it's not going to stay till uh probably uh for but it stays for a very very long time uh it's it's actually survives survives configuration changes the only thing that is makes the view model kind of different from the save instance state uh because the view model could undo large data while the save instance states can only undo specific data very little and at the same time when your system or when the uh, the device let's say the android os kills the app uh the save instance state persists uh, while the view model might need to call the database to fetch uh the records or fetch from the api that's just the different but all in all the view model retains persist data throughout the configuration changes of the application now all logic will be going through through the view model instead of you are uh, issuing it from the views so it's better to uh create all logic from the view model and when you are instantiating the view model you don't use the context you could only use the application context which is just a copy of that particular life cycle you get to have the favorite view model that extends the view model and uh, it's at the field which is the live data favorite you have a constructor which will be uh using initializing the view model itself uh, that takes the database and the favorite id so uh, at this time you could load the favorite by id uh which uh the same view model or the same view model is what the activity will be listening to through an observer so you have that set up you should have a factory that is attached to the view model uh which uh you set up this way when you have the database and its id as well and you have uh the view model which actually extends that and uh it, it creates up the model class uh which instantiates the favorite view model uh which is uh pointing at you have the app executors that keeps uh is uh running your background traits is either in the dix io or 
in a mid thread or on a network IO. Depends on how you want to execute it. This app executors is actually from the Java standard and uh, it helps when you're fetching or when you're doing a batch upload to the database or when you're fetching high amounts of data at the same time on the background. It's actually going to channel to different uh, uh, multiple threads. You could see here we have three threads that will be handling uh, the fetch and uh, also the get from the database or from a network stream depends on what you are actually pointing at now you have the main view model this main view model is where uh, the main activity or the calling activity will be listening to uh, it's also going to have its own constructor as it is and it takes an application which is an application context not a context now then initialize it in turn it's going to call the data abstract object to load all records uh, which will serve as the live data at the point in time when it's being inst initialized or instantiated. So you have that. We'll be calling this method uh, when we need to visualize or when we need to display uh, the content using an observer and uh, to actually uh, bind that to an adapter. And now let's look at our detailed activity before we round up. Our detailed activity is where we'll start up with, where we need to delete, where we need to add, and uh, where we need to that those are the two things we're gonna do. Uh, let's get to look at uh, the aspect of uh, saving to the database. We have that in line to it's not two to nine. When you're saving to the database, we can see how short it is now. Uh, before it was kind of longer when you need to uh, uh, call the content, uh, call the database, set, set up the columns, and do some other manipulation. Now we need to have the records, the movie ID, the movie name, the thumbnail, the synopsis. And the rate you just tie that to the constructor you have an object of the constructor and that is what you use in it it's saving to the db you call the insert favorite over here which is actually from the data abstract object the favorite that the dao at which is done in the run method of the app executor you get an instance point to the dix io you execute and the runnable and you run that on the background thread the same thing goes for delete you point at the delete favorite with the id you pass it into the delete just that now if you're looking at when you're trying to uh check the status uh, so that you will know if the record exists in the database or not or uh, before you actually know uh, probably to fill the art or to make it fresh since there is no copy. Uh, you could do that using an ASIC tax because why we are using an ASIC tax here is because we need uh, to get it back on the back on the main thread. After running on the background thread, we need that same thread to be returned at the main thread so that we could listen to it at a point in time. That's why we use an ASIC tax here to do in the background. When it's going to do in background, it's going to load all based on the movie name. I have that as a list entries and in turn when is when, when you are post execute that's on the on the main thread you're going to check the size if it's greater than zero if it is uh you know that yes uh it's exist in the database uh you set the favorite to be true at that point in time uh so the same thing goes if there's you set a listener to the favorite when you need to you might need to remove from the favorite uh table in the db uh you get to uh do the necessary process to save and also to delete from the favorite just the same flow you save and you delete from the favorite but with that uh call this line line 317 that test for the entry list size is going to do the magic because anyway anyway you're going to actually listen you're going to get one item when you're calling back so it's actually going to work perfectly that way so with all this setup you have that uh clean up and you could see how short it could be and how clean it was uh when you're trying to when you're using room and uh, uh persistent data as well uh you don't need to write any content provider at this point uh in the next video so as you make this short and understandable we're going to observe those uh favorite uh list item uh, we're going to display that uh, when you are uh, changing the settings to the favorite movie uh, right there from the settings. 
down to the main activity to display the favorite uh, movie uh, on the adapter. So that will be the next uh, video, uh, which I would like you to stay in tune. Don't go anywhere. Let's get to move with the tray. Uh, so we're going to uh, move the movie app to the next level using the room persistent database with live data, life cycle architecture. Thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout this video. I will employ you to get the source code that I'll be committing to the to a branch right there in uh, the GitHub uh, repository. So you can pick up the source code and uh, try to understand how to set up this uh, flow, the main view order, the app database, the data abstract object, the app executors, and the view model using the live data and so on. Thank you very much. Again.